Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge IGCAC Chemistry Paper 6 Alternative to Practical May June 2020 0620 Question number one. A small rock salt contains sodium chloride and sand. Sodium chloride is soluble in water. Sand is insoluble in water. A student obtained dry crystals of pure sodium chloride from a lump of rock salt. These are some of the steps the student used. In the step one, the student grind the rock salt into smaller pieces. And in step two, add the rock salt to water and heat while stirring with a glass rod. And then in step three, filter the mixture to remove the sand. Name the apparatus A in step one. So uh, A is mortar. Part B, explain why the mixture is heated and stirred in step two. So when we heat a particular mixture of salt solution, so basically it's gonna speed up the dissolving process. Part C, name the apparatus labeled B in step three. So uh, labeled B apparatus is actually a filter funnel. So we can call it. C2, state the scientific term for the sand left on the filter paper in step three. So anything that is left in the filter paper is known as res residue. So the sand left in the filter paper will be residue. Part D, describe what the student must do after step three to obtain dry crystals of pure sodium chloride. So the student can place that filtrate, the student can place the filtrate in an evaporating dish. in an evaporating uh, basin and then heat it to the point of crystallization. And after that, the student can allow that particular uh, concentrated solution to cool. And as a result, crystals of salt is going to form. And then the student can filter that crystals and then dry the crystals in, in a filter paper in an oven. Question number two, a student investigated the temperature change when aqueous sodium hydroxide neutralizes dilute hydrochloric acid. The question, the equation for the reaction is shown. Sodium hydroxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce sodium chloride and water. Experiment number one, a polystyrene cup was placed into a 250 cm3 beaker for support. Using a measuring cylinder, 5 cm3 of aqueous sodium hydroxide was poured into polystyrene cup. Using a measuring cylinder, 45 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid was poured into the polystyrene cup. The mixture was tired and the maximum temperature reached was measured using the thermometer. The polystyrene cup was rinsed with distilled water. Experiment 1 was repeated using 10 cm cube of sodium hydroxide and 40 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid. Then it was repeated again with 50 cm cube of sodium hydroxide and 35 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid. Then experiment one was repeated again with 20 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide and 30 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid. Guys, if you notice carefully, the total volume is always 50 cm cube. That's what we are targeting for. And then 30 cm cube, 20 cm cube, 35, 15, 40, 10, and 45, 5. Use the information in the description of experiments and the thermometer diagrams to complete the table. 
Now the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide is already done for us. So the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid will have to do. So in every case the volume must add up to 50 as we can see from the previous page. When we had 5 cm cube sodium hydroxide we had 45 cm cube dilute hydrochloric acid. So this is a relatively easy question. So just let's just add everything up to 50 every time. And in every case, we can see there is a uh, thermometer diagram, the highest temperature reached. So the highest temperature reached in this particular one is 23. So this is also a relatively easy read. So 23, the next one we can see 25. Part B. Plot the results from the experiment 1 to 8 on the grid. Draw two straight lines through the points. Extend your straight lines so that they cross. Now in the x-axis we have the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Whereas in the uh, y-axis we have the highest temperature reached. So from the previous page. 25 volume of sodium, aqueous sodium hydroxide and 23 degrees Celsius will be the highest temperature reached. Raised. So 5. 23 in that way the next will be 10 25 10 25 and then we have 15 27 then we have 20 29 30 30 so for 30 the value is 30 for 35, 28. For 40, 26. For 45, 24. So 26, 31.3. So volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide is 26. And volume of dilute hydrochloric acid will be 24. So guys, in the part C, the point on the graph where the two straight line cross is where all of the aqueous sodium hydroxide reacts with all of the dilute hydrochloric acid to form a neutral solution. Use your graph to deduce the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide and the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid that react together to produce a neutral solution. Show your working on the grid. So volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide as according with the grid we require 26 cm cube for reaching neutralizing point. So for 26 cm cube, the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid will be 24 because the total volume always has to be 50 cm cube. Use your graph to determine the highest temperature reached if the volume in C1 were mixed together. So the highest temperature reached if the volume in, uh, you know, shown in C1 were mixed together would be 31.3. Part 3. Which solution, aqueous sodium hydroxide or dilute hydrochloric acid, was the most concentrated? Use your answer to C1 to explain why. So basically, the most concentrated one will have a lower volume. So with that respect, uh, we can see the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid is lower. So we can say <coughs> dilute hydrochloric acid was most concentrated. And the explanation for this would be as the volume is less than the sodium hydroxide. Part D. On the graph, sketch the lines you would expect to obtain if a copper can was used instead of a polystyrene cup. So, basically, 
all right if a copper can was used a copper can would lose heat to the surrounding much faster so the maximum temperature would have been reached at the same volume however it would be a lower temperature Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a burette instead of measuring cylinder. To add dilute hydrochloric acid directly into the polystyrene cup. Burette is more accurate. And a disadvantage would be it's very slow to add. Part F. How could the reliability of the results in the investigation can be checked? This is a titration type reaction, so obviously to check the reliability, we must repeat the experiment again and again. Part 3. Two solids, N and solid P, were analyzed. Tests were done on each solid. Test on solid N. Tests were done and the following observations were made. Test on solid N. Solid N was dissolved in distilled water to produce solution N. The solution was divided into three equal portions in three boiling tubes. Aqueous sodium hydroxide was slowly added until in excess to the first portion of solution N. We see white precipitate formed. The precipitate dissolves in excess aqueous sodium hydroxide, forming a colorless solution. There are three cations in IGCAC, those that produces white precipitate. One is aluminum, the other is zinc, and the third one is calcium. However, in excess sodium hydroxide, calcium does not dissolve. So we can consider this aluminum and zinc However, we cannot conclude uh, aluminum and zinc. However, we cannot conclude which one is in this particular solution. The next thing that we can do, aqueous ammonia was added slowly until in excess to the second portion of solution N. White precipitate formed, the precipitate dissolved in excess aqueous ammonia forming a colorless solution. So, from the first two verdict, we had aluminum and we had zinc, those that produced white precipitate with aqueous ammonia now only zinc dissolves in excess aqueous ammonia aluminium doesn't so the cation should be zinc aluminium foil aluminium foil and aqueous sodium hydroxide were added to the third portion of solution l solution n so aluminium and followed by sodium hydroxide and then heating is a test for nitrate it's a test for presence of nitrate the mixture was heated using a Bunsen burner. Any gas produced was tested with damp red litmus paper. Damp red litmus paper is a test for ammonia gas. So we can see effervescence was seen, meaning ammonia evolved, and then the damp red litmus paper turned blue. So we can see the detection of the gas is ammonia. So now if nitrate is present with this test, ammonia will be produced. Name the gas given off in test 3. Since they asked uh, name, so we'll have to give the name ammonia. Identify the solid N. We have already identified that the solid contains zinc and it contains nitrate. So we can name it zinc nitrate. Test on solid P. Solid P is potassium iodide. So since this is potassium iodide, there is potassium ions and there is iodide ions. Complete the expected observation. Describe the appearance of solid P. Now since it is potassium iodide, the appearance will be white. Every group 1 salts, every group 1 and group 2 salts are white in color. Next, a flame test was done on solid P. So if we were to do a flame test on potassium ion, we would see lilac flame. Solid P was dissolved in distilled water to produce solution P. 
which was divided into three equal portions in three test tube. One cm depth of dilutric acid followed by aqua silver nitrate were added to the first portion of solution P. All right, nitric acid followed by silver nitrate is a test for halide as I have already mentioned in many of my videos. So since there is a halide present here, which is iodide, we were going to observe a yellow precipitate. Part three, a few drops of aqueous bromine were added to the third portion of solution P. So if aqueous bromine is added, we know that iodide, we know that iodide in potassium iodide, the iodide has a oxidation state of minus one. It can easily lose its electron and turn into iodine. Bromine is more reactive, so it will kick out the iodine and take the place of iodine and produce potassium bromide and leave the iodine as is in aqueous form. So the observation will be uh, orange or brown. Part four, stay clean and bright white are two brands of washing powder. Both contain sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is, insolu is soluble in water, reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to produce carbon dioxide gas. Plan an investigation to determine which of the two washing powders, stay clean or bright white, contains the greatest percentage of sodium carbonate. You are provided with the samples of the two washing powder, common laboratory apparatus and chemicals. So in order to write an answer like this one, what we have to do is we have to take both of the washing powder in equal mass and we'll have to place it in a flask. And then we're gonna add acid in excess. And then we're going to collect the gas that is produced in a gas syringe. The volume of the gas was measured at the end. The washing powder that produces the most amount of carbon dioxide gas will have the most amount of sodium carbonate because when sodium carbonate reacts with acid it produces carbon dioxide gas so guys that's all for today's video see you in the next video and hope you're doing well in your exam best of luck